हेलो डियर फ्रेंड्स वेलकम अगेन टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल जियो टेक्निकल इंजीनियरिंग कंसल्टेंसी टिप्स टुडे आई विल बी टेलिंग यू ऑल अबाउट मेथड्स ऑफ इंप्रूविंग बियरिंग कैपेसिटी ऑफ सॉइल नाउ व्हाई इट इज डन इट इज डन टू इंप्रूव द सब सॉइल एट द रिक्विजिट साइट सच दैट इट डेवलप्स डिजायर्ड बियरिंग कैपेसिटी इन अ वे सो दैट द फाउंडेशंस कंस्ट्रक्टेड आफ्टर सब सॉइल इंप्रूवमेंट produce resultant settlements within acceptable permissible limits as per IS 1904 and then standard code 1904 which defines about the permissible settlement limits for different kind of structures in different kind of soils <laughs> whether it is sand or clay or it is a combination of soil and clay or clay and soil sand how it is done different techniques are adopted to improve in situ soil characteristics of the site as per specific requirements of the project by applying design methods in response to the existing ground limitations based on a stratigraphy of the site water table etc now why is it necessary to improve bearing capacity because of the land scarcity it necessitates the use of sites of soils which are relatively weak or of marginal quality to be used but are required to be utilized for the project proposed by using some kind of soil bearing capacity improvement method to increase the bearing capacity of soil of such sites which are relatively weak there are many soil bearing capacity improvement methods a few of which have been even patented an individual site can use a mix of several methods say more than one or two methods can be used at a particular site depending upon the requisition of the site using geotechnical fundamentals to produce an adequate solution for the concern site this can be achieved by altering or modifying the soil properties as per need basis now what is important is the identification of means to be adopted to achieve a significant increase in the bearing capacity of soil based on the stratigraphy of the soil present there at the site <laughs> now soil bearing capacity improvement methods you can increase the bearing capacity by increasing depth or increasing width of foundation footing but subject to the condition that it produces resultant settlements within acceptable permissible limits as per indian standard code is 1904 this was the first one number 2 is the mechanical stabilization in which grain size gradation of the site soil is altered if its non cohesive coarse granular gravelly soil lower size binder or filler material is required to fill the voids but if it is cohesive soil much more granular material is required to stabilize cohesive deposits now method 3 compaction most economical this is the most economical one suitable for both cohesive and as well as non cohesive soils is done by rolling that is by using pneumatic roller or any other kind of roller as per the site requirement in case of roads or by dropping heavy weights on the soils for multi story buildings etc the technique being called dynamic compaction this dropping heavy weights technique is called dynamic compaction which results in increase in density accompanied by an increase in either cohesion or angle of internal friction or both <coughs> method 4 pre loading this is used primarily to reduce future settlements but may also be used to increase shear strength that is we work in such a way that after the building has been constructed the settlements are bare minimum and they no, do not exceed the specified permissible limits it is used usually in combination with drainage now how do you attain this drainage at the site means draining of the soil is done that is removal of soil water is done in order to speed up settlements under pre loading this in turn results in increase in shear strength but depends on water content present at the referred site consolidation without drainage takes much longer period in comparison to consolidation with drainage methods adopted at the site examples are sand drains and brick drains which are usually the methods adopted for draining the water out from the soil method 5 densification using vibratory equipment particularly useful in sand silty sand and gravelly sand deposits where relative density is less than 50 to 60% these methods use vibratory probe which is inserted into the soil and withdrawn as a result of which the soil settles in the vicinity of the vibrating probe hence further after the densification has been done and achieved at the site you need to use a good quality fill in order to level the ground at the site 
Method 6. Use of in situ reinforcement. This approach is used with stone, sand, cement, lime columns or even soil cement piles columns. This treatment produces composite ground. Sometimes fibers of different materials can also be used but that has to ensure adequate durability in hostile soil environment. Method 7, grouting, jet grouting, which I have already discussed with you all in my uh, lecture number 78. This is a process of improving certain soil properties by injecting a viscous fluid into the soil. Most commonly, this viscous fluid is a mix of water and cement or water and lime and or this fluid is used with additives such as fine sand, bentonite, clay or fly ash. <coughs> Even bitumen and certain chemicals are also sometimes used. The context of usage of term grout is important to define the process in case of soil improvement because this is a term also used very widely for filling the rock cracks or building cracks or concrete cracks. So you have to be very sure of this grouting technique in this soil improvement reference. <clears throat> Method 8. Use of geotextiles. These function primarily as reinforcement. They reinforce the soil mass. They are used in road embankments, retaining walls, reinforced earth walls, slopes, embankments on slopes. They are even used in poor soils beneath the embankments. Large strips of geosynthetics metallic or fabric incorporated within soil mass are used to impart resistance to tensile, shear and compressive forces by the soil within the soil mass which in turn increase the bearing capacity of that very particular soil where, the, where this method technique has been applied. Method 9. Chemical stabilization. Use of chemical stabilizer, stabilizers is termed as chemical grouting. Commonly used chemical agents are phosphoric acid, calcium chloride and sodium silicate. They are seldom employed but in my personal opinion should be avoided for and to maintain environmental sustainability. Now method 10. Sometimes <coughs> Soil cement and lime soil treatment often together with fly ash and or sand is also done which is a kind of a chemical stabilization treatment method used for improving bearing capacity but they are classified separately. Now method 11 confining the soil by sheet piling or any other method suitable for a particular site. In sheet piling method an enclosure is formed with the help of sheet piles which help compact particles of soil within this enclosed space resulting in improved bearing capacity of the soil. Once the soil is confined it is further compacted to achieve even higher strength sometimes if needed for that very particular respective structure at the site. Vibroflotation technique. This uses vibratory methods to increase the soil density and hence in turn the bearing capacity of the soil is improved upon. Altering groundwater table. But it is not so easy. Lowering of groundwater table is effective in reducing liquefaction probability in sands which in turn definitely results in improvement of the soil bearing capacity of that very particular site where uh, lowering of groundwater table technique has been adopted at the site. Now Namaskar and thank you for your patient hearing. Hope you would have uh, loved this lecture of mine. I can tell you that uh, more and more of this practical knowledge will come out in my future lectures and anyone can connect me for consultancy at anurakapoor16 at gmail.com or anurakapoor16 at yahoo.co.in please keep on subscribing to my channel youtube channel geotechnical engineering consultancy tips thank you thank you very much